Hi, I'm Danny and these are my diecast disasters. In this video, I'll be doing a restoration and custom build off against Rob from Matchbox Garage. Rob has a great restoration channel where he restores and customizes all sorts of Matchbox cars from classics right through to some cars that are not so classic. A uh, big thanks to Rob for always being a supporter of my channel right from the beginning. And when we got in touch a few days ago, I suggested to him that we do a build off. So a few days before this, I had just bought a box full of old, pretty beat up matchbox cars. And amongst it, covered in thick, grotty paint, was this little RS2000. So figuring this car would be right up Rob's alley, I suggested that we both do a Ford Escort custom rally car, just like if we'd bought some beat up Escorts in real life and did them up as our weekend races. So as you can see, I'm not one to shy away from a challenge and this car is in pretty rough shape. It's completely covered with about three or four layers of thick grotty paint and it's got some sort of, I thought they were rocks, but I think they're dirt and paint mixed together inside it. The actual metal castings look to be in quite good condition, but the rest of it is also gummed up with paint. It's hard to tell what state it's in. I start by drilling out the three rivets, holding the base to the body of the car. With the base removed, we can take a look at all the gross bits inside. That windscreen is completely glued in place with thick paint. So you will notice here that after I poked gently at the windscreen it was actually so brittle it just crumbled away. This is not a particularly good start. To loosen the paint around the windscreen I use one jar of hot water from the tap and one jar of cold water. I add some caustic soda to the hot water and drop the casting in. Don't touch this caustic water solution as it will burn you. After about a quarter of an hour I fish the casting out of the caustic solution and give it a rinse in some fresh water. It has definitely loosened that paint holding in the windscreen quite a bit. Hopefully I can gently pry it out now. You can see here how much it's softened that paint. A gentle push and out it popped. It sure is looking quite a mess. I've already broken the front windscreen, but maybe I can salvage the rear part. There's plenty of paint left on the body casting, so I remove it with some paint stripper. 
Here are our castings after paint stripping. They look pretty good, but they're a little pitted and quite a bit of oxidation. And here is our very crumbly, crappy looking windscreen. I'm not holding out a lot of hope for this. I use a wire brush on my rotary tool to remove the oxidation and clean up the castings for painting. Here they are after burnishing. I started attempting to clean up the windscreen with some sandpaper and what do you know it just started to crumble. It's so brittle, there's no way I'm going to be able to salvage it and use it. I give the body of the car a coat of Tamiya Fine White Primer. As it was quite rough and pitted, I give it a sand and then another coat of primer. Now that it was looking a little bit smoother, I give it a coat of Tamiya X2 White. After this had cured, I masked off some lines underneath the windows on the sides of the car. These were then painted in a mixture of Tamiya X4 Blue and X14 Sky Blue. Here are some wee decals that I made with my printer. I carefully cut them out with my craft knife and put them here and there on the painted car. The base of the car was first spray painted with Molotow Silver Dollar Rattle Can. I then gave it a dark wash. I later ended up making a big bore exhaust out of a couple of pieces of aluminium tubing. Let's take a look at the grubby interior of the car. It definitely looks to be a mixture of dirt and yellow paint. I scrape out as much of it as I can with my pick and take it inside and give it a really good wash with hot soapy water. That's looking a lot better. It still doesn't look much like the interior of a rally car though. Rally cars don't have back seats do they, so we'll chop that out. I'm going to be careful and try not to chop the whole rear of the interior section off with the back seat. So there we go, I completely managed to chop the back part of the interior off. It was right about this point that I received the bombshell email from Rob. His escort was finished, and apparently it was looking awesome. 
After gluing my interior back together, I cut out a small piece of metal plate and bend it to make a new floor for the rear of the car. I use Tamiya putty to stick this in place and rebuild the interior around it. I then added a small roll bar made out of wire and some seat belts. There's also a fire extinguisher in the back. This is then spray painted with the Molotow silver rattle can. The details are painted in and a dark wash is applied. Even though they aren't bucket seats, it's now looking a lot more race ready. To make some new front and rear windscreens, I cut out some small pieces of clear styrene to fit over the windscreen holes inside the casting. I then gently blasted it with my heat gun for a little while until it kind of softened and took on a slight curve. They came out okay, they're not perfect. I apply a tiny amount of glue with a stick and press them into place. With our body and base painted and our interior refabricated, all that was left was to put the car back together. So let's take a look back at what we started with. A particularly rough, paint encrusted old RS2000. A true die cast disaster. And here is our Team Escort rally car makeover. Gone is the gross covering of white, yellow and black paint. Our Escort is now looking much smarter in white, with its blue stripe down the side. I chose number 77 because that's the year I was born. I'm sure if I owned this car back in the day, I would have had a Momo steering wheel. As it spins round to the rear, you can see that big bore exhaust. I ditched the gross old super fast wheels and replaced them with some style looking spoked mags. I added some spotlights on the front. The inside of the car is looking much more rally ready with its seat belts and roll bar. And finally it's proudly displaying the Ford logo on the bonnet and roof. I'm pretty happy with this restoration, and although there's a couple of small things that aren't quite perfect, I think considering what I started with, it's a pretty good turnaround. I personally found this build a bit of a challenge because it's not a sort of style I would normally do. I'm super excited to see what Rob comes up with with his Escort. These are the cars we would have been driving around in in our youth, so it probably brings back good memories for both of us. If you haven't checked out his channel, I definitely recommend you go and check it out right now, Matchbox Garage. He uploads almost every day, so there's always something new for your Matchbox fix. Links are down there in the description, so it's only one click away. Thanks heaps for watching everyone, and if you enjoy this video, please like and subscribe.